you. Well, oh, hello, Botard. Munson here with the Get Out and Grow show from Good Morning Portugal. How are you doing this afternoon? Let's start with Anna. How are you? Tudo bem, Anna? Uh, yeah, doing, um, doing okay. Yes, keeping busy. Just had a, um, a weekend away and then um, off again for a bit next week. So, uh, yes, it's, it's sort of, uh, yes, busy. Um, busy busy last few days, busy um, music-wise. And, um, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything extra that's been going on. But, you yeah, know, weather's not bad so far at the moment. And um, not getting, to, well, it's... Getting a bit cooler, but not not freezing just yet. And um, so glad to hear it. Glad to yeah, hear. It. Uh, yeah, not quite winter yet, but it's, um, yeah, but um, yeah, all seems um, seems fairly good. Had a couple of walks as well, so uh, good for you. Yeah. A bit autumnal, is it? What's that, sorry? A bit autumnal in the UK. Nice to go um, for a walk in the fall. Yeah, I, think, I think there's a bit of um, colour changing. Haven't seen much in the way of leaves coming down yet, but um, yes, I know it probably won't take too much time before that happens. So. Uh, Sure. Yeah, well, well earned break for you next week. So have a great time, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time, Anna. Thank you very much oh, yeah. for all you do for the show. And so, yeah, enjoy your break next week, Mr. Oh, yes. Agus, Monsieur Age, if he's in France. So how are you? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not in France, I've, I've not actually been to France. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, you just in much, it's full Lord of French Agus. people. Yes, Lord Agat of Great Britain. Then, how are yes. you? Yes, uh, although I know, I know that. Um, but yeah, I'm doing okay. Um, I, I, I know that Lee's been to France because um, you described Paris as overrated on that Facebook post of the most overrated <laughs> place you've ever been. As you might imagine, <laughs> as you might expect, uh, th that's uh, just uh, Lee's general frankness, Mr. McGrady's general frankness, which we'll experience more of this afternoon, I'm sure, especially when. We have uh, viewers who are sharing material of this kind. Let's see how Lee reacts to this, shall we? Did you know almost all garden gnomes have red hats, Lee? It's a little gnome fact. <laughs> how are you this afternoon, Lee? Much worse now. I'm absolutely fantastic. We've had a, a good bit of rain. Another beautiful wet Monday. I love it. <laughs> you don't often hear people saying that. But anyway, um, Sharon H. Thank you, by the way, T Duck, on that. No, no, the, it, yeah, it, it, Monday is kind of my day off. I just do my own stuff, so I'd yeah. rather it rain today and it'd be nice for the rest of the week. Yes, so yes. I love wet Mondays. Love a wet Monday. Who doesn't like a wet Monday? Yeah, first thing in the week. Who doesn't okay, like a wet Sharon Monday? <laughs> Sharon is here as well. Good evening, garden friends, for a wet cinter as well. The rain has stopped, but during the biggest downpour, I discovered a roof leak. How very exciting, you say. <laughs> well, that's a really positive reframe on that. Well done, Sharon. I'm going to join Lee in a non-sober October. Cheers! Sold! And oh no, says T-Duck, Sharon, it rained here in Lisbon, but not too much. And um, thank you very much, Sharon. We'll come to your question in just a moment. Uh, which is fantastic. But yes, this non-sober October business, uh, Lee, I have to say you're doing an amazing job. <coughs> if you do, do need any support from us, you know uh, where we are. Uh, what, what's going on? You're having a non-sober October and you're into double figures already now. Well, this is my third year, my, my third year doing non-sober October. Well um, done. A few, lads I used to, a few lads I used to work with invited me to do a sober October and yeah. I thought that was just ridiculous. So I've gone the opposite way. So for the last three years, I've managed to yeah. post a beer every day. Yeah, it must have been a while uh, for you to stop laughing when they gave you such an invitation. I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Why would uh, anyone ask me to be so? <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, thank you, Sharon, for your question as well as your picky. Hi, Lloyd. Your garden looks fantastic. Lovely to see you at the weekend. Uh, maybe you've got questions uh, for Lee. Uh, Sharon <laughs> has your. Victoria's in too. Hola, Botar Gardeners. Hello, Victoria. How are you? How's your garden growing? How's your balcony doing? Is there anything that can be grown on a balcony this time of year? We'll find out. And um, John, over to you. Uh, yes, indeed. So if you forgot to let Anna know about your question, or indeed have only just thought of one, uh, let us know here. Marvellous. Well done. And uh, Victoria's saying in answer to how's it going on the balcony mm -hmm. there, my container lemon tree has flowers. So excited. That's a lovely thing to see. Lee, uh, can you tell us what's going on then in your garden at the moment? You were mentioning that you are, you're experiencing quite a lot of uh, oranges this year. 
Yeah, I mean, we've, I mean, the season's just starting, but these are just windfall from this morning. So uh, it's a good start. In Fantastic. a few weeks, we'll be sick them and leaving on the doorstep for the neighbours. Yeah, um, that's the way. It but yeah, it's, it's, it's that it's that it's that great time of year in Portugal now, where every every fruit tree is starting to produce. Yes. Um, yeah, yes, we had a beautiful picture in this morning from Bill. Um, the Madronia fruit is that also out, isn't it? Do you like these? Uh, I like to pick at them. I, I've never, I've never collected any to eat properly, but there's a few in some of the gardens I do, and I always just nib one on the way past. Yeah, uh, and it's got to be a perfect they're one. Not, they're not quite my thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't see them in the shops, I think, because they, they, I don't know, they're quite hard to grow in as much as you wouldn't get a perfect batch. They are all sorts of shapes and discolorations and they, they fall very easily. I'm sure they wouldn't travel very well. Principal use for them, I think, in Portugal is to make liqueur from them, which is quite nice. But this is also known as a tree strawberry um, and uh, not, as, not as abundant, I think, in colder climes. But you, it's called a tree strawberry, isn't it, elsewhere in the world? And they do have a little bit of fruit, but loads here, especially at this time of year. And they do drop their fruit, so you want to be careful if you've got that anywhere near the house. That can get quite messy as well. Yeah, uh, with the they, they, make, they make a real mess. They do, don't they? Yeah. And which you know, because you have to clear it up yeah. sometimes. So, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, I've got one where it, 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 it hangs over the path, and they, when they drop, they just splatter. And it stains terribly. Yep. So, yep. yeah, I'm going to clean more quickly. That rings a bell. Also, then in from Sharon, look at those walnuts. Fantastic stuff there. Uh, let me just find what your comment says, Sharon. Uh, we're sending parabens to you on your, uh, your showing of nuts there. Uh, for the garden show, we've never had a walnut tree before, so feeling pretty happy about these just harvested in our new home in Colada. So congratulations to you on all fronts there. Thanks for, sh for that, Sharon. Always delighted to receive your pictures. 913-590-303. Let me put that into the comments now so that you know where to send your pics, videos, and questions. Let's get to the first question. Oh, also today, actually, um, we, we are, of course, based in the um, premised on um, accessibility and disability issues. Um, and I think, John, you found something today for a little bit later on in the show about uh, accessibility, disability and gardening. So we might have that as a regular feature, which would be fantastic. However, for now, uh, let's go to Sharon's question. Then, uh, Where do you buy neem or mineral oil for citrus? This is a, this is a place you can get in for pest control, isn't it, Lee? I'm in Sintra, but get to Lisbon yeah. frequently. Best place to get neem oil then? Well, if you're in Sintra, there is... There's two options. There's the local uh, cooperative, the local farmers cooperative. So, um, how do I explain it? Um, they've got the city centre, big roundabout. You come exactly. second off that second. Yeah, I can tell you. Yeah, no, yeah, there's a big cooperative. You can find that easily. Google search it. But there's also a garden centre in Sintra Centre, and they sell it. Um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a little bit pricey, but it goes a long way. So you'll see a, a small tub for like 70 euros, but you dilute that into a lot of water. So that'll last you like two or three years. Um, okay. I'll put a link to the Garner Centre and the cooperative into the um, Facebook group. Nice one. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, let me just turn the notifications off because that got a bit annoying this morning on, on the all new breakfast show. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, but that's done for now. There are messages coming in. Thank you for those. Neem oil, then, it's not something you have to get from the hippie shop. You actually, it is available as an agricultural pro product. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. And there's a lot of different variations of it. There's a lot of different mixtures of it. Some yeah. of it's concentrate, some of it's direct into the bucket. So it couldn't be any easier. Uh, you can actually. If you Google search it, you can make your own, but the ingredients is cost about the same as what you're buying it for, so it doesn't really um, yeah. doesn't really pay out to buy it to to make it yourself. Just buy it off the shelf. Yep, very good. There you go, Sharon. Thank you for that question. Um, look at that. Victoria's also got a banana tree on her balcony with big new leaves and a baby tree as well. Fantastic. Loves the Algarve weather. I suspect the banana tree there, even in a pot. Uh, Fiona's with us as well. Uh, on briefly. But it's animal dinner time, so we'll watch most of this later. Of course, it's getting darker, so animal dinner time is coming in closer as we get into the autumn. It is feeling quite autumnal, isn't it, Lee, here in, in um, and wintry almost uh, in Portugal? Are you, are you experiencing that? 
Oh, he's frozen up. We've he's got, so cold. We've got a good leaf drop at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, we've got, we've got a good leaf drop. Have I frozen? Can you hear no, me? No, you're all right now. Sorry, I thought it was so wintry and cold, you'd actually frozen up. But no, no, you're moving again now. Right. Yeah, we're getting, getting a good leaf drop. All the, uh, the Borgen Villas are the first to go here on my side. Yeah. So they've all really started shedding. Um, so some of the big trees are dropping their leaves. It's looking quite nice. I, I enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very uh, brief weather change compared to England. In, in England, everything goes really quickly, but here yeah. it's as everything, as some things dry off, other things start to explode. So, yes, yeah, okay, excellent, nice Good little fun. snapshot. What's going on? Maybe we'll come back to what to do uh, more of sort of winter preparation as well. That might be a useful thing to talk about. John also mentioned before the show um, to talk about safety again because we haven't done that for a little while. Maybe tooling up. Uh, or, or actually, you know, staying safe in the garden, not tooling up exactly. But if you are using tools, obviously, even just going into the garden, it's right. It's good to have the right gear on. So we might look at that tonight as well, if you've got time. In the US, the product I use was mineral oil. Didn't have to be neem and it worked great, but I haven't found it here yet. So is there an alternative, Lee, that you're aware of? Not, not really. Not that's widely available. Uh, the neem oil is widely available and it's kind of the traditional um over the counter stuff like, okay. I've got a lot of options because I've got the chemical license so I, I can go, go from the coppers and sulfates right. but everybody seems to stick with the neem oil and it, and it works well okay brilliant it works good enough good stuff Anna have you noticed anything in the group or anything that's come in that we need to put uh, in Lee's direction um, I haven't uh, haven't seen anything as yet I haven't, I haven't heard of any photos in or yeah any questions in just yeah. In fact, we've just actually just had one in actually uh, from T Duck. Um, what? Uh, oh, I'm just. I don't know if this is a joke incoming. Yeah, we know um, what yeah. we know what he's up to. Yes. <laughs> what do you call a garden that's been chicken proofed? No answers to that one yet. Okay, well, um, we'll just leave that yeah. hanging there. I suspect foul play. What, what was play. that? What do you call a garden that's been chicken? What was the question? I missed it. Yeah. What do you call a garden that's been oh, chicken proofed? No uh, imp impeccable, dear. Oh dear. Um, thank you very much, T Duck. Lowering, I, I, lowering did, the... I did, I did, I did actually, I did actually, get... sorry, go on. No, carry on, carry on. I just uh, I saw an amusing meme that I wanted to share with you. You did actually, what a, co a couple of years ago, I had a call from a, uh, a couple in Lisbon city centre who had pet chickens and they wanted their garden chicken proofed or the plants chicken proofed but without the wire and that was a real a real challenge it was really good fun because i had to select 10 different plants that the chickens would be able to kill um yeah it was a good day i enjoyed doing that job it's quite it's quite challenging fighting chickens <laughs> so what you did then instead of fencing them away from the plants you chose plants that they wouldn't be able to destroy yeah 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 okay that, that was we uh, the whole yeah. premise they wanted, they wanted the chickens to be free range and to have the opportunity to still have a garden yeah that's that's quite the challenge because i was extending our chicken run yesterday still got the scars to show it you'll be proud of me chicken wise nasty stuff in italy and i extended their chicken run and whilst i was doing that i let them run a free run the garden and they were destroying the place mrs emmett said to me earlier in the afternoon we've got some lovely pak choy for dinner tonight <laughs> went to get a pak choy they they taken that but as soon as our backs were turned and they were scratching everything up, they make a terrible mess, don't they? So I'd be very interested to know what those things were. Presumably what you planted are not edibles, though. They're more shrubby things, aren't they? No. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 was, it, was, all, it was all large, well-developed plants. It was uh, stone surfaces. Um, yeah, yeah it, it was just things to put, put them off more than anything and try to distract them a little bit as well. Yes. So we yeah. put like a little uh, sand bath in. Uh, small oh. water feature. Right. Yeah. It's, a, it's that's like a chicken retreat almost. Spa, chicken spa in Lisbon that they could charge people for to, to take their chickens over for a holiday there. Well, they, 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 <laughs> sorry, go they, on, mate. They, 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 were, they were actually, they were actually pet, they were pet chickens and they used to have a. Um, uh, Injected every few weeks to stop them from laying eggs and developing into like a normal chicken. It was very really? strange. Yeah, that, that does sound a bit weird, doesn't it? 
Okay. Um, all right. Question for Lee from Fiona, who's not, who's waiting to go out and feed the animals by the sound of it. Thought of a question for you. I have a young Anona tree. It's not done well in a pot, recently lost all its leaves, but it's still alive. Not sure if I did the right thing, but I've planted it out, hoping that its roots can behave more naturally in the soil. Does it need TLC, i.e. manure and ash? We'll obviously wrap it if it gets really chilly. Anona tree. What's that, Lee? there it's a, 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 a nona a nona oh my goodness um i had one pot here that did the same thing and it, it showed yeah it will do it will do better outside of the pot here a thing yeah, we're, we're, you're breaking up quite a lot, Lee. We heard it was fragile. You had a similar experience yourself. I have put it on the screen so people can see it. So could you repeat the answer? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, that's better. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Sure. Yeah, yeah, we got you. Okay. Yeah, they, they are really fragile. Uh, and they don't do well in pots at all because they need uh, a regular water uh, regime. So mine being out in the garden, under the sprinklers, that one survived brilliantly. The one in the pot did terribly. Um, so, yeah, I suspect it will do better. If it's got a good root ball, it'll do better outside. Yeah. Okay. And is that something you can eat as well, the Anona reticulata? What is the, that pod there? Is it just seeds? Or I is think it, it is. It's, it's just a seed pod. Yeah. Right. Okay. Quite quite attractive though. Quite a pretty thing, and or an interesting and exotic looking thing there. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, no, so... no, yeah, yeah. No. No. They they, they, they they are actually edible. They, they come out like a big love heart when you get them grown properly. They look quite oh, nice. Right. Okay. Is that what you plan to do, Fiona? Let us know with that. Excellent stuff. Thank you very much for that question, John. Maybe we'll have a little um little. Uh, a look at the whole world of accessibility, disability and gardening. I think you found a, a, a story or an article along those sort of lines. If you want to send me the link in the private chat, I can put it on the screen as well, if you want. Uh, uh, yes, OK. Uh, so I'll just do that now. Thank um, you. But basically what it is, is a charity uh, and they... Um, uh, what are they called now? Uh, Gardening with Disabilities Trust and Adapting Gardens uh, for uh, making them more accessible, basically. So I'll just post their um, their page on the uh, Facebook page for um, the show. Nice one. And then people can go and check this out. Check it out. Um, obviously, uh, and get more details. Okay, nicely done. Okay, did you want to say any more about it? Are there some specifics, or did you did you just want to share that link? Uh, I'll just share the link for now, and then yeah, um, when we maybe do this a bit more in the future, yeah. because I've had more time to look into stuff, I can give specifics then. Well, this sounds like, quite amazing and quite inspiring. There is a lovely... Ooh, what is that, uh, that bush on the front there? It's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, that is a lovely-looking uh, flowery bush there. And this is Gardening with Disabilities Trust, Adapting Gardens, Changing Lives and Defying Disability. And uh, was founded by Mrs. Peggy Kinsey. Uh, and she started the trust in 1968. So they've done a great job, I think, in that time. And handed out uh, 68. No, value of grants awarded. Is that $38,000, it says there? I think that's in pounds because this is uh, .org.uk. Ten energetic volunteers and six fundraisers planned for 2022. If you want to help out, uh, one testimony I'll just read. We might come back to them in future weeks, as John said. The unadulterated sheer joy and pleasure I get from my troughs and garden in general is incredibly important to me in promoting my overall well-being, mind, body and soul. And with my now having the ability to add my own special touches in my raised troughs, I feel rejuvenated, motivated and inspired. Isn't that fantastic? And that's from Caroline, who's obviously been working with the Gardening with Disabilities Trust, .org.uk. So I'm sure we'll have another uh, related link, uh, blog or similar from John as we connect up accessibility, disability and gardening, uh, which is our pleasure to do so, because that's how this whole group got started. And if we can inspire anyone 
uh, to get out in the garden who might otherwise not do it. Um, whatever their level of ability, we're delighted to do so. Uh, the Anona fruit is indeed edible. Uh, ah, known as sugar apple. I've heard of that, uh, which also has medicinal properties, which is what I was experimenting growing it for. Of course, can you tell us more about what you're doing, Fiona, as well? Because that's you grow special things, don't you, with special purposes uh, in life from the garden. So we would like to know more about what you're doing. And if you're selling anything this year, we would be delighted to share that in our Gumper store uh, on our website as well at goodmorningportugal.com. So, uh, Lee, John was asking about garden safety. It's something we sh I think we should touch on from time to time. Getting ready to go out into the garden. We we're talking there about inspiring people to get out, get out, get out and grow. That's literally the name of the show. How should people be prepared from a safety point of view when they're first setting up and getting gardening? Oh, that's a great, great big question. Um, so th the first thing I would always consider is the layout of the garden to start with, especially with, with people with accessibility problems. Uh, so planning the garden out so it's so usable. So you just yeah. mentioned there about raised beds and troughs, which are the first way to go. You say bending, you say getting down. It brings everything up to the level you can work at. So planning the garden to start with for somebody with disabilities is essential to start with. And then yeah. tool selection. Um, you want you want tools that are comfortable to use and are safe to use. So there are widely available uh, rakes and spades, shovels and pitchforks are all um, height designed so you get the right height tool for, for using. Um, I, I like my spades to be just above my waist height, but I know some guys like them higher, especially if the thicker set it saves on the back bending. Yes. So there are loads of little things like that. You can have a personalised uh, phys physical ability. I, I like to have T-handles on my tools, but a lot of people with disabilities would use like a D-handle. So right. it's like a plastic um, at the end, which is D-shaped. It makes it easier to grip um, and use. And then machinery-wise as well, uh, which is a, a big a big benefit recently is the... Um, affordability of battery power tools uh, and they're getting better and better every season and affordability for battery power tools is brilliant at the moment um, hedge trimmers, trimmers, lawn mowers and they all run on a small battery like you would use on your, on your home drill so that's a big, I know that's being used widely in disability gardens across the UK so Great stuff. Thank um, you very much for that. Because uh, I, I can't believe what I'm about to tell you, but I was streaming the garden um, this uh, well, <coughs> last yeah, over the last pre the previous weekend. I can't believe it, Lee. I actually streamed up the cable. So the um, what should I have done? Um, <laughs> I know elementary, isn't it? And I I I, I was streaming around, and I was, yeah. you know I, I'm I'm assuming I'm not going to do something as stupid as that. And the next thing you know. Um, I haven't probably prepared myself correctly. I did have goggles on because I know streamers can whip up stuff. So I always wear my goggles because I don't want to be injured in that way. Um, but clearly I hadn't prepared very well if I put myself in a situation where I ended up with my cable wrapped up in my streamer. No no terrible damage done. I, I, I think I've got the right kit in as much as a, a fairly hard-wearing and durable power cable. But what's what's the best way to avoid that happening based on my mistake? Well... What well, if you're going to use a, a, a cable fed trimmer, then you should always put the cable over your shoulder and have it looped over you and behind you and then work yeah. forward from that. Um, because strimmers always seem to work better when you're working in reverse, so when you're walking away, but with an electric yeah. cable, you're walking over your cable, yeah. So it should be over your shoulder, um, and then you could work forward with it. It's the same with the lawnmower. You start at the first point and you work into the garden. And then when you finish, you finish at the furthest point. So you're never having to come back over yourself. Yes. Um, the worst the worst ones for the electric cuts were the fly, were the fly mods. I heard of so many people hitting cables with a fly mod. 
yeah. because you tend to just swing it around and it's all very free and easy. Yeah. Um, but again, if you throw it over your shoulder, it, it's behind you, then you should never have that problem. Okay. And but from a if, you, if you look at the new still equipment, that's... sorry, mate, carry on. Oh, sorry to Pardon? interrupt. No, I, I was just wondering about. Um... Yeah, it, yeah, if you look at the new stuff. After you. <laughs> We've got a delay tonight. You, you're breaking up, Carl. I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Right. No, no, you go ahead. You if, go if, ahead you the new, uh, power, if you look at new power, if you look at new battery systems, if you look at new battery systems, they are absolutely perfect and they are affordable at the moment. Um, right. And that, that negates any electric cable issues you're going to have. And they're very light and they're very easy to use. Yes. And because it's a stop, immediate stop start when you use the trigger. Yeah. It makes it so much safer. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Um, there is the matter of clothing as well, um, which I think people might uh, underestimate when gardening. Um, you know, jeans are some of the worst things to wear when gardening, especially when they get damp, right? Layers are probably best, probably to wear best to wear a hat. And always wear gloves. Would you add anything to that for getting kitted up from the clothing point of view in the garden? I still spend more on my gloves than any other part of the clothing. Uh, they just, it, it is essential to have proper hand protection. Everything else you kind of get away with, but a good pair of gloves, uh, light, light trousers, even in, in the summer in England, light, light trousers are kind of essential. Um, and then for your upper body layers, cause you can take them off. Um, that's how I've always worked. And a good pair of work shoes with a good grip and possibly steel toe caps. If yeah. You want to okay. get carried away. All right. Um, yeah. Anna and John, I know you've um, worked at pro gardening projects uh, in Devon. Um, is there anything you remember from the inductions that you must have been given when, when getting ready to garden? Uh, anything that stayed in your mind? That is the mark of a good induction, I would have thought, that creates habits that you remember for the rest of your life. And I'm putting that to the test now. I think um, one of the things I most remember, um, because it's an obvious thing, is don't put the rake lying down on the <laughs> ground because people can tread on it. And yeah. Do you know, it's so true that. And as so I saw so many people get told off for that at South Devon College when I was doing a gardening course. Yep. Yeah, because the funny thing is, John, the only time I've been in, on a construction site, not a garden, I just laying flagstones as, as a job um, on, a, on a, pro a project that I was working on when I was doing construction work. And we, we, pat we did someone's patio and um, there were three of us working on it. And the only time I've been in a situation where somebody left a rake lying down, I happened to be standing over the, the handle end of the rake when one of my colleagues trod on the other end. And you couldn't, you couldn't write oh. it. But this is why, um, and that's why I'm even keener now that rakes not be left lying down. Yeah, I have to almost have the scars to prove it. And um, yes, it is elementary. It's it's the stuff of slapstick and and humour. But it is such a serious mm. <laughs> injury that you can you can incur with something like that. Okay, so keep the tools to one side. Don't just chuck stuff on the floor. Have a tidy workplace. That, that, from your induction, John, that seemed to be what they were saying at South Devon yeah. College. Anything else uh, from you or Anna? I'm struggling to remember, to be honest, but um, <clears throat> I don't know if you've got anything, Anna, at all. Um, I'm just trying to think. Um, I think, yeah, gloves and boots, I remember. And, yeah, it's sort of picking up tools if you're not using them and um yeah i'm, I'm just trying to think i, I know obviously you're sort of holding secretaries holding down the, by, down by your side but um yeah I'm, try, I'm trying to remember the other ones and um streaming when i did do a bit of um streaming quite quite some time ago i was sort of having i was reminded to um to sort of hold on to the sort of excess cable and uh, obviously because i couldn't hear anything um sort of uh wait to get a tap on the back um to um, no one to stop and that sort of thing. And uh, obviously, um, garden ponds are a bit of a uh, one to watch out for as well with cables. So, um, yes, co constantly having to check behind you. And, of course, pets running about as well. So, um, 
can be a little bit tricky when you're wearing a visor, a visor trying to sort of look around while you're streaming but um yeah i'm trying to remember the other ones but yeah the uh oh, that's good stuff that's fantastic and I, I don't know the particular project where we all met there was a big problem with um hemlock as well wasn't there oh yeah uh, that people yeah. had to be made aware of as well so if you've got any dangerous plants not just for ingesting rightly some plants are dangerous like poison ivy for the skin as well so you need to be careful with what you're doing and that's where gloves come into it right oh god Oh, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Um, just, just going back over some what we just missed. Uh, if you're pruning, you should always wear goggles. Um, because I've had it myself. I've had uh, small branches into my fingers. I've had them into my neck, into my chin. When you've been pruning away all the all day, it's very easy to leave a sharp point, and they can be lethal if you walk into them. So, oh, yeah. oh, goggles are a big thing with pruning. Yeah, um, and ear protection is a, is another another thing. I'm I'm I really think going deaf. I'm using heavy machinery all day, and in my younger years, all I ever did was shoot a gun. So I have real issues now when it gets to certain decibels of noise where I can't hear properly. Right. Um, so even if you think you're only out for a, few, a couple of hours in the morning, running a petrol machine, you should always wear ear protection, either ear muffs or ear plugs. Um, okay. And but, yeah, it, it's it's really it's really it's really common sense, and you can never be too safe. You, cannot, you know, you should always overgo, overdo with the, with the PPEs. Yeah. yeah. Okay, John, you wanted to add something? Uh, yeah. Another one I've just thought of is um, I did say it's always a good idea to have an um, EpiPen um because obviously if you sometimes you can get the anaphylactic shock from being stung by a bee or something like that or a wasp or or you know bitten or whatever it might be and obviously that could be really really bad you could know people die from anaphylactic shock so yeah okay. that would be and i think it's the epi pen that that stops it from being an issue isn't it i think i've got that right anyway yeah, well said. Another good consideration in the garden. In, on on the master of gloves. Sorry, go on, Lee. In around 2015, 2016, I know they were incorporated into all the first aid boxes that the local councils used to use because there'd been a couple of incidents where lads had got stung. And so they started adding EpiPens into the first aid box in the vehicles. Yeah. Um, it, can get, it can get really painful. <laughs> I've been lucky. I'm, I've been stung every summer. I've been I've been working as a gardener. Every year, I, I expect at least two or three stings, and I've definitely had a bad reaction to it. But I did. I, I did once get a, uh, well, what was it? A giant hotweed. I got some sap of a giant hotweed on on the middle of my finger, between my, my thumb and my finger, yeah. and that was very painful for a few days. That less that was blistering. Yeah. Okay. Always so, use gloves. A, a lesson well learned. Yeah, and look at this. Sharon has just had these arrive today. My favorite, just like you, Lee, favorite garden tool. It looks like um, Sharon invests in the gauntlets there. I mean, that's not just a pair of gloves. That looks like something you would wear to a medieval festival, um, it, like a jousting tournament or something like that, or something from Lord of. What's my, uh, what? Go on, mate. <laughs> Like my old falconry gloves, <laughs> they do that's right. Falconry, I'm thinking of like, um, uh, what was that Game of Thrones or something? It looks like from the wardrobe of Game of Thrones, but uh, they are very impressive, Sharon. Um, very nice, um, and presumably, um, safe and they look comfortable the as well. Go on, Lee. Do the gloves I wear at the moment are uh, the, the nylon filled. The nylon fill gloves that I wear at the moment, if you catch them in the chainsaw, it, it protects you, but it, it rips up the nylon to stop the chain from working. But they've also yeah. got protection for the for, for vibration to stop white yeah. finger, which is a, an issue with professionals. Because you use the machines yeah. all the time, it's constant vibration and you lose uh, the blood flow in your fingers. So the gloves I use now are designed for stopping the chainsaw and stopping the, the white finger, the, the blood flow, keeping the blood flow circulation going. But well, never. forty pounds a pair, and I can go through a pair in six. I go through a pair in six weeks. It gets wow. to be expensive. 
hobby. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Okay, thank you for that, everybody. That's really helpful. Great suggestion, John. Thank you for that uh, this week. Perhaps in the last few minutes of the show, then we can look at winter jobs getting ready. I think I think it was only two weeks ago we talked about preparing for autumn, and it feels like we we should perhaps be looking forward to winter and what to do. Maybe both in Portugal and the UK, Lee. What should be people be thinking about this time of year? Oh well, in in, in Portugal, you should be West Africa. Your fruit trees, that's my next big job this week, is uh, preparing the fruit trees for the heavy loads you're going to be taking. So um, I think I'm going to show you this in the garden, actually. Uh, a lot of our fruit trees are, have got an abundance of fruit on. And so you've got branches like... You've got branches like this that are... Wait, how do I get this in? You've got branches like this that have got too much fruit on. Yeah. It's bending the branch over to the point where it's going to snap. Um, so I'm, I'm going to take some of these off early uh, just to just to save the branch. Um, so that's one job you can be doing, just going through your fruit trees and just assessing the weight that you're going to be getting on branches. Uh, cleaning your drains out, ready for the rain coming. Um, or oh, what else in Portugal? Uh, you, you can, it's ob ob obviously, it's opposite to England. It's is our, our weed time now, so this is where all the weeds start coming through. Uh, we don't get an abundance of weeds in the summer because it's too hot. So either get off, put back clean. We're losing you again, mate. Okay. We'll call you roses now or don't. Oh yeah. Yeah, we, you're breaking up quite a lot there, Lee. Well, while, while you're just re-establishing your connection there, well, we have a lot of cactuses. Hence, I think the need for those uh, particular gloves there. I made the mistake of touching the fruit with my bare fingers. Yikes! Sorry to hear that, Sharon. Uh, prickly pear. <sighs> Tell anyone, my goodness, yeah, prickly pear that's a thing here, isn't it? Uh, for sure, be careful with those. Um, so yeah, I think we might have a better connection with you now, Lee. I've moved into the kitchen, there, there you wifi. go, perfect. Um, so I've actually got to the table, it's more comfortable. But I don't know how much you heard, but in Portugal, the weeds are starting to come through now, yeah. So de dealing with the weeds, keeping off the footpaths, and keeeping all the footpaths clean is a big part. Of Portuguese garden this time of year, yeah. But back in the UK, it's time to be pruning your your shrubberies, especially stuff like the dogwood. Um, that's very popular with shrub in the UK. Um, this time of year, you can start cutting all back before we get the heavy frosts. So you you sort of preempting the cut, so you don't have to do it when it's frosty, and collecting all your leaves up, ready to making your leaf mulch. Uh, that should just be starting now back there. Uh, and your autumn or autumn, early winter lawn care. So a scarification and a feed and an overseed, getting ready for the winter time coming in. Okay, yeah, great. Good, good, good time of year. All right, excellent. Uh, just going back briefly then to the Anona, that was a question that um, Fiona asked. It is the, the sugar apple and also known as the sweet sop as well. I love it how these uh, plants are known by different names around the world. Uh, and um, good to know a little bit about the um, this particular fruit, and I'll bring it onto the screen so you can see it there, uh, just in case you have this. I think you do, you can buy these in the shops in Portugal, as well, if I remember rightly. That seed looks very familiar anyway. A sugar apple, also known as a sweet sop, is the edible fruit of the Anona squamosa, a small, well-branched shrub. And that is native to the tropical regions of South America and the West Indies. It's high vitamin and mineral content, along with a unique sweet taste, to make it highly popular, especially in the tropics. And these are the different names around the world. Brazil be the fruta de conde, uh, or fruta do conde, and the fruta piña. In India, the citofal and the sharifa. In Spain, the manzana de azuca. Philippines, atis. China, the shija. And Jamaica, the sweet sop or, or sweet... Sweet sop or sweet sop. That sounds like the same thing to me. Uh, but there it is. There's the sugar apple and um, the nutritional facts. Look at this. What's it high in there? I can't really tell from that breakdown there. 
But it sounds like it's got a lot of goodness in it with a lot of B vitamins in there and um, some a fairly high level of vitamin C as well. So that'll be good, I think. Uh, health benefits for diabetes it has a beneficial effect on asthma, I think, and blood pressure management, cholesterol, strong bones, heart health, and th thyroid. It sounds like one of those superfoods, Lee, but I know this is not a cooking show or I, a I, show. I, I, I just described it as a shrub there, but I wouldn't class it as a shrub. It's more like a tree. They get really quite tall if you let, if you let, them, if you let them alone. I've, 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 I've seen them 14, 15 feet high without any yeah. problem. I've seen a few bigger, but they look a bit unshapely after that. They get up and then they start to drop over a bit. Yeah. But the fruits are really quite big on them. They're, they're very nice. There you go. Yeah. Sugar apples nice. that we've been introduced to this week by Fiona. Thank you very much. So we'll leave it there for this week. You have a great uh, holiday, Anna, next week, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time. Thank you very much, John, for your suggestions tonight. Thank you, Anna, for keeping... Uh, up the fantastic work in the group over on Facebook there. I'll get out and grow group on Facebook. F face back? Facebook, find that on the homepage of the Good Morning Portugal Show. Revamped website, all the things we do, including the gardening Q&A, uh, the 50 plus vitality group, the food and wine club. Uh, although this isn't a cooking show, we do talk about food and wine over on our group on Facebook as well. And all the other things we're doing at Good Morning Portugal. Leaf, last word to you. Anything else that we should have told everybody today? Oh, you put on the spot. Um, no, just be careful with the weather. All right, we've mate. Talked about, we've talked about protective equipment earlier. The big, the big thing is getting caught out in this rain. It can be terrible. Yes. So yeah. look, at, look, look ahead. Oh, bulb season. Bulbs are coming on sale. Yeah, They're everywhere at the moment. Okay. So select your bulbs now. Get them early because they do vanish quickly in Portugal. So get them oh. while you can. Get them while you can while they're in the shops. And keep up the good work in not sober October. Lee, you're doing a great job Thank so far. Thank you very you much. I'll try my best. Yeah, keep going, mate. You've got this. You can do it. All right. See you next week. Bye for now. Good, good night, buddy.